So the first step in the peach melba cheesecake is after we've made our plain vanilla batter, we now need to split that batter into three separate layers. Two of the layers are going to be almost equally as thick, and then the third layer is going to be very, very thin. And I'm going to call my husband in, and he's going to split the batter for me because he's really good at it. So come on in, Mark, and he's going to split the batter. And while he's splitting the batter, I'm going to get the peaches ready. We have our no sugar added peach chunks, and we have our 15 ounce can of clean peaches. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put the clean peaches in the blender. And I'm going to just puree them. remove the excess liquid. I don't want my thing to be too watery. Really just want the peach pulp. The, water, the more watery your batter is, the longer it'll take to cook. So we'll just strain out the water. Strain out the batter, out the juice, and just leave the pulp behind. And it's not an exact science. Don't feel that you have to get all the water out. Because remember, you've pureed your peaches, so if you get all the water out, you get your peaches out too. That's no good. And I'm going to drain my peach chunks out just a little bit. And just to remove any excess liquid. And we will mix that in. And now if Mark is finished doing his magic, we have three separate layers here. One's going to be peach, one's going to be white chocolate, and one's going to be raspberry. So we take our one raspberry, we're going to take our peaches, we're going to add it to one of our batters. We'll just mix that in. Now if you want to, and I'm actually going to do this, if you want to, it's not required, you can lightly color this layer peach colored with a little bit of red and yellow food coloring. Just a teeny little bit. Don't need to make it too much. I'm going to add two drops of red and maybe four or five drops yellow and we'll just mix that in that's our bottom layer our bottom layer is the peach now we have our white chocolate we have our six ounces of melted white chocolate i melted it in the microwave a lot of your white chocolate baking chocolate boxes that you get will give you instructions on how to properly melt the white chocolate and the chocolate you just mix that in this will be our top layer. Alright, so we have our six ounces of white chocolate mixed into our second layer batter. It's going to be our top layer. Now we're going to go back to the stove and get the peach melba sauce that's been sitting kind of forgotten. And bring it over to our third layer, which is very, very thin. There's only about a half to three quarters of a cup of batter in this. It'll be a very, very thin layer between the two layers. And we're just going to, I'm going to say probably two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons, a little bit less than that, of the raspberry. The raspberry flavoring, the meal, the melba sauce, it's very, very powerful. It's a very strong flavor. And you just want a hint of it. Just a little bit. When we fuse the rest of the Melba sauce on the top of the cheesecake, we're going to get our nice raspberry flavor. But here, it's just going to be one of those flavors that will be on the tongue real briefly. And that's why we want it to be so thin. And now because he's so good at it, I'm going to have my husband pour the layers. Now, I've taken the pie crust, the, the graham cracker crust, out of 
the refrigerator. And I have wrapped the spring pan in heavy duty foil up to the top to the rim. It's very, very important that you do this. There will not be any breaks or slits in the foil because we're going to make this in a water bath and you don't want any water to leak into your pan. So it's a very important, important uh, step to wrap your spring pan in heavy duty foil. Some people even go as far as putting two layers of heavy duty foil. I don't. I just use the one 99% of the time. It's fine. And we've taken it out of the fridge. We've wrapped it in the foil. And now my husband will come in and he will pour us these layers of cheesecake. And we're going to begin with the colored peach layer. And he's going to spread that evenly on the bottom. Remember, I've, I've food colored it to make it a peachy color. You don't have to do that. Some people don't like food coloring in their, in their food, and that's fine. It's just for a visual, visual effect. And now he's going to spread the, uh, the very, very thin layer of the raspberry on top. It takes a real delicate touch, so that's why I have him do it. And he's just going to spread that there real nicely on there. It doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. Um, he doesn't tend to put it all the way on the edge. He just kind of spreads it very, very delicately on top. And you got to do it delicately because if not, then the layers will all run together and you really don't want that. Do that and he'll use the back of a spoon to kind of spread it out again really really gently like really gently because you don't want to mix it too badly into the into the lower layer it's, it's like I said it's a delicate procedure to do it that way you want your layers to be relatively the same consistency so that one's not runnier than the other so you don't get the heavier layer sinking into the layer that's not as dense. Again, he doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. Just a real light, real light layer. Believe me, everybody that gets a bite of the cheesecake will get some of the raspberry in there. And again, you don't want to mix it in. Just want it to be there on top. And now the final layer is the white chocolate layer that then goes on top of the raspberry and peach layer. Again, he'll spread that delicately to make sure that the uh, incoming layer doesn't totally um, push the lower layer of the raspberry into the thing. And actually the act of putting the top layer on is actually going to spread that raspberry layer out a little further than it was already. So that's kind of, it, it works in its own little way to help spread the lower layer as well. These layered cheesecakes there, they can be a bit tricky sometimes. But they're really, really good. And they are worth the extra work to put in and make these layered cheesecakes. And they're fun. People don't expect you to have um, interesting flavors like peach, you know, peach melba and orange creamsicle cheesecake aren't your, your normal run-of-the-mill cheesecakes. So they're kind of special. Thank you. And he'll just spread that out a little bit, make it to smooth that out a bit. Just to make it a little even and then it'll be ready to go in the oven. But we're going to make the orange cream sickle uh, cheesecake next and they'll both go in the oven at the same time, the top. So now we're finished with this and it's going to sit aside and we're going to make the orange cream sickle. Orange cream sickle coming up next.